for him. My part this morning is uh, actions speak loud in words of Brother Toby. And Brother Toby is, was talking about something I've always had a desire. Brother Ray had always wanted to do, and God's opened up a door. I'm going to try not to get sideways or sidetracked this morning. I'm going to try to stay on course. But the big eye in our lesson this morning is because we understand that words are easier than actions. We must intentionally reach out to our neighbors. Brother Darrell, that's what we're called to do, amen. It would be a lonely thing if the church was just like Brother Wayne. That was a good time to say amen, church. I'm thankful for a God that reaches out to all of us. He died for whomsoever will. So the lesson starts out this morning in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 28, talking about a certain lawyer. And I know we all know this story, Sister Jessica. But it said, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, and saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy strength, with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But the verse 29 says, But he, talking about the lawyer willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, Sister Townsend, who is my neighbor? He didn't realize he'd opened a can of worms, Brother Dave, when he asked Jesus who his neighbor was. And we all know the story, so I won't tarry here very long. We know about the certain priest. The Bible said he saw him and passed by on the other side. Sister Chelsea, there was a Levite came by and he looked on him and passed by on the other side. And we know the good story about the Good Samaritan. Sister Joan is that the Good Samaritan saw a need. Sister Sherry took care of the need. Amen. And that's what Brother Toby was talking about, that look around and just see a need. I don't know about you, Brother Junior, but when you look, they're everywhere. Amen, Brother Jack. They're just everywhere. And the great thing is we serve a God that can take care of those things, Brother Richard, because he's an everything kind of taking care of God that we serve, Brother Ben. And this is in Luke 10 and 36 and 37. This is what the Lord said, which now these three, he was talking to the lawyer, thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves. Verse 37 said, he said, and he said, he that showed mercy on him, and Jesus hung him out to dry. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Brother Rayleigh, we've all got a great commandment. We all could put our name and our face, Sister Patty, in his shoes right there. Jesus is talking to me and you. See, the good Samaritan, he didn't have a dog in the fight. He just saw a man that was hurting, Sister Terry. And he said, I think I'll stop and help this gentleman. I've, I've often said that if you'll dig in your pocket and help somebody, it really means something, Sister Amy. See, anybody can just walk by and pat somebody on the back and just move on. Anybody can take some overflow and throw it in a pot, Brother JT, and say, I've done my part. But it's another thing, Brother Wayne, when it hurts, Amen. You know, I don't know how many of y'all, and I'm not going to drift too far as ever felt Brother Toby's biceps. <laughs> Sister Tonya probably don't want y'all feeling his biceps, but he's got some pretty strong biceps. But see, they just don't happen by accident, Brother Allen. Takes some work, whether it's heavy lifting or whether it's weights or whatever. See, if you want to learn to, to allow God to work in your life to bless through you, Sister Mary, you've got to let him operate, let him build that muscle up inside of you. So you can't just sit inside these four walls, Brother Leonard, and talk about how you want God to operate and to move in your life. Sister Leonard, if you won't let God get in there and operate, let you pick up some heavy weights once in a while and build some muscles, amen? Because, see, nothing, nothing feels so good in my life as when you are allowed to reach out, Brother Jim, and help somebody. 
Not so you'll get your name and Sister Melinda put your name out there on the marquee and said, you know, Brother Wayne gave so-and-so $100 this week. But because God in heaven, Sister Debbie, wrote your name down and said, that's my servant. See, that's what, I, that's what I gave him that $100 to do. And the other day I was out riding my bicycle. We were somewhere staying and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I really want to help somebody this afternoon. And, and you know, I don't mind telling on honey because I get to tell you her bad faults. It hurts when I tell you about my bad faults, Brother Chris. But we was out paddling for Jesus and I was just talking to the Lord, man. I was just talking to him and God, I really want to do something for you. And so Brother Danny, that evening we'd walk down a piece and, and uh, we, we was at a place, and, and God had spoke to me and said, there's the man over yonder that you were supposed to help. Key word there was supposed to help. See, I said all the right things, Brother Allen. I had told him that, God, I really want to do something, but I kept my hands on my billfold. I had good intentions, but we won't go where good intentions will take you this morning, says Kathy. See, God wants us to do more than just have good intention. God wants us as, God wants us to reach out to our neighbors. And it, it ain't always about, as Brother Toby said, about putting money in somebody's hand. Maybe it is just a good word. Maybe it is something, some food in the belly. You know, uh, a young lady was telling us a story, me and Honey, the other day about how that she works at the school and, and said that when this little boy come to school, said you could see his toes in his shoes. His shoes was, we're talking about in the United States of America in 2021. Sister Donna, there's such a need, there's such a ministry there. When I think about Jesus, I think about, he said, I come to you as a role of a servant. I'm with Brother Toby. If he can't see Jesus in us, where are they going to see Jesus? I think the Apostle Paul said, we've written an epistle read and known of all men. Well, the child, they got to look at us. Jesus' name, Holy Ghost-filled people. Who better, who better qualified, Brother Wayne, to reach out to, the, to those that's in need? Because where would I be? Sister Shannon, except God reached down and showed mercy in my life. I don't have to look too far to understand that God has been real good to me and Sister Sharon. I'm ever indebted to Jesus, ever indebted to Jesus. James 1 and 27 says, Pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fathers and the widows in their affliction. Then he put a heavy on us, he said, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Because can I tell you, if you'll get about Jesus' work, it'll mess up your personal life. Such a man of God will tell you to do things when you got plans to do something else. As I said yesterday, all that's going to matter, church, such a millennial is all that we've done for God. See, God's keeping a record. When God, he said, when you give, he said, if you give, he said, I'd give it back to you. Whether that be with your finances, Brother Jerry, whether that be with your time, whether that be with your informa information. Aren't you thankful for a God that keeps good records, church? I thought about how in Luke, Chapter 4, verse 17 through 20, Jesus' first sermons, he hit on these th points. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recover the sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogues were fastened on him. I thought about all that he could have talked about, Brother JT. He could have talked about a lot of things. But this is where he's, he hit home at, Sister Mary. He said, the gospel is to the poor. Aren't you thankful for being poor and needing the gospel? See, you don't, you don't have to be poor to serve God. But most of the, he said, you know, about the rich man, it ain't that impossible, Brother Jack, that rich people can be saved. But a lot of times, if you have needs, you don't look, Brother How, to God. So many times, as a rich person, we may just say, this is my arm, and I've done it myself. But the gospel, that's, that's who needs to, it's the gospel is people that are poor. And aren't you thankful you was poor, and you reached out and said, God, I need this gospel. The gospel that changes people's lives, not just for a day, not just for a week, but for an eternity. Amen. 
I'm convinced that I pass this microphone around. We could say some testimonies would be in this house that God has, has, has changed my life forever, Sister Jane. Only God can change people's lives, church. Aren't you thankful to be associated with the family of God? And I know Brother Jerry is going to know this, and I had to ask uh, Brother Allen that last Sunday about this, but in Leviticus 19, 9, and 10, and, and every time I row by a field now, uh, this just it brings to my mind in verse 9, it says, And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. Neither shall thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest, and thou shalt not glean thy vineyard. Neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. And he said, I am the Lord your God. In Proverbs, he said, he, in Proverbs 28 and 27, it reads like this. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. We're talking about actions speak louder than words this morning. Because see, Brother Jerry, it's easy to, to say all that you're going to do. But if somebody said it's a whole different thing, Sister Shannon, to put feet to your prayers. Amen. I thought about, and we all know the story about Naaman, and, and we know that he was a leopard. And, 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 but this is what I want to talk to you for just a minute. In, in 2 Kings chapter 5, 1 through 4, reads like this. And it says, Now Naaman captain of the host, the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and an honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but the Bible said, but he was a leopard, Brother Kevin. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And, and one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is the land of Israel. And we all know the story that he went to his king, and his king went to the king where Elisha was, and they set up an agreement so Naaman could go see the, the man of God. But I thought about all it said, Brother Donnie, about this little maid. It was just she was just a little maid. Brother Wayne, it didn't call her name, didn't give a background history check, but it just said this little maid that had been brought away captive out of the land of Israel. When I read that story every time I read that, Sister Chelsea, I thought about if Wayne had been that little maid. I wonder if my attitude would have been as good as this little maid. See, Brother Jack, she could have called an attitude real easy and said, you know, I'm, I'm away from my home. I'm, I got drug away from my people. And now me and my people is all in captivity. And, and if I could have a little room here this morning, Sister Joy, maybe I could just say, God, you sure been wrong to me. I had it good back there at my house. Everything was good, Sister Lana. My refrigerator was full. I had the nicest clothes. My shoes felt good on my feet. I was riding in a nice Cadillac. Come on, church. The air conditioner worked. The hot water was hot. Amen. Could have had me. She could have grabbed an attitude, church. But she went and she said, oh, let me tell you about a man. When's the last time we had it bad? And the only thing we could think about is let me tell you about a man. Instead of we thought about, oh, me, oh, my. Oh, my, oh, me and my bad situation instead of looking to him, the author and finisher of our faith. Because, you know, only God would put this in a book. God said, if you want to be healed, you must pray. He said, pray one for another that you, come on, church, you might be healed. Amen. See, when you're not feeling so good, that's the time to look on your brother and your sister and say, maybe I need to pray for Brother Danny. Maybe I need to pray for Brother Junior. That's what God said. He said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself. Sister Sherry, I don't see anywhere where he said about love yourself. Put God first. Put your neighbor second. But God's going to take care of you, Sister Joan, if you'll take care of what God tells you to take care of. I thought about how in the book of Psalms, these folks had a different attitude and 
um, chapter 137, verse 1 through 4, and you'll be, you'll be familiar with this when I get started. It said, By the rivers of Babylon there, set, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. See, Brother Kevin, sometime our mind can take us into places we don't need to go. I know y'all probably don't know this song, but there was a guy named, um, and I lost my chain of thought, but anyway. This man said, I was talking about, he sang a song about digging up bones. It was a country song. Who was it? That's who I was going to say, but I was afraid I was going to be wrong. All right, so Randy Travis sang a song about digging up bones. But if you listen to the song very much, Sister Betty, he said sometimes bones are better left un undone. Don't unearth them bones. What I'm trying to say, sometimes the devil will take you down memory lane, Brother Tim, and remind you how good you thought you, oh, church, he'll tell you you had it good back yonder, huh? You had, but you didn't have it good back there. You got it good now. You living in the land of the, where it flows the milk and the honey, amen? He would tell you to try to put you back in bondage, see? But you better be like the singer said. You better leave them bones. Uh, better not dig up them bones back there. You see what I'm saying? That's what happened here. These folks said, we remember when. Oh, we remember when, see? See, I, I don't know about y'all, but it's easy to talk about fasting when you got through eating supper, Sister Townsend. Amen. Amen. How many? I'm just going, we're just going to have some fun for just a few minutes. How many folks in here go to the doctor? Y'all can stick your hands up. That's all right. I'm not going to sit you. But anyway, have you ever been to the doctor? Sister Brittany, and they said, now, you can't have anything to eat after midnight. Are we going to draw some blood in the morning? Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I don't know if it's this Brother Wayne or not, Sister Donna, but I'll eat like a cow up to 11.59. Hey, because huh? I know I'm not going to get no food. I'm going to be so hungry. Can I get a witness in the house? Huh? And you can't wait until they get that blood out of your arm till you can go get it somewhere and get you something to eat. Amen. Huh? And that right says amen. I'm, I'm preaching now. I'm, I'm, I'm staying in the book now. Here's what I'm trying to tell you is, church. It's been a long time probably since we ain't had food for a day or two or three or four or five or six. Amen. See, this is what she said in verse 2. They said, we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. She, they, they didn't stop there. Brother Wayne said, then they that wasted us required of us mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And number four said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? See, the little woman here, the little maid of Naaman could have had that attitude, Brother Kenny. And Naaman's name wouldn't have never appeared in the, in the, uh, the New Testament of the book. But she set herself aside, Brother Jerry. And she said, all this, I'm not going to hold this against God because God's been good to me. God's been good to me. She said, I just got to tell somebody, Brother Larry. I just got to tell somebody that there's a man. Church, I don't know about y'all, but God's been dealing with my heart about telling somebody about the man. Been telling me. you've got Because I'm telling you, church, you, you, you can look around and see this world's in a horrible... Let me back that up. America's in a horrible spot. And if there's ever a time, if we really believe there's great revival coming upon our land, today's the day of salvation, and now's the accepted time. Brother Orlando, we better get busy. I think Jesus said there's coming a day when no man can work. Work while there's day, because there's a night coming that no man's going to work. I'm moving on. I thought about how that we're talking about actions speak louder than words. Jesus said, I don't know when the last time y'all read the book of Matthew chapter 25, that chapter. Man, that'll make you do some praying if you read Matthew 25. In, in, in verse 34 through 40 reads like this. Then shall the king, talking about Jesus, say unto them on his right hand, 
Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Verse 35 says, For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. And I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee a hungered, and fed thee, and thirsty, and gave thee drink? And when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye've done it unto me. Brother Darrell, every time I read that, it's, it's powerful to me. Because, see, we all want to do something for Jesus, amen? But sometimes, Brother Tim, we want to pick and choose who we want to help. Amen, church. Or we want to help him when it fits into our schedule. Amen. So you can be like old Brother Wayne, ask God to help you, Brother Toby, to bring somebody in your path, and when he does, you just let that person walk right on by. God, help me to be more attentive. Help me to get my mind off of worldly things and fleshly things and get my mind on kingdom things, church. Y'all pray for Brother Wayne that he'll get his eyes or be single that his whole body might be full of light. Because, Brother Kenny, all that's going to matter, church, is what we've done for Jesus. That's what he just told us right there. When you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. I thought about how I listened to a preacher on the radio, and he, his mom and daddy was a missionary across the pond. And, and he said that they'd get so excited, Brother Jerry, when it was Christmas time because people would send them things and, and said that, that they would get gifts, you know, from different churches, Sister Bev, and, and said that they would open the boxes, and sometimes the shirts they'd get would come out with cigarette holes on them. And they'd smell like smoke, or they hadn't got washed, and looked like they had to then about wore out. He said, our heart was also broken, Sister Betty. I thought about who in, in, in the world would send something like that to somebody in need. Because here's what the Lord told somebody in the book of Genesis. He asked him, he said, why are you so wroth? If you've done your best, it'll be accepted. Come on now, church. That's what he told Cain. But this is what he backed that up with. So Debbie, he said, but if you're not done your best, sin lies at the door. Church, we, God expect, we expect God's best. God's expecting our best. Amen. I thought about one time I had picked up a hitchhiker walking to Chiefland. And I drive a little Toyota Tacoma. It's about this big. And uh, anybody that sits on this side is all jammed up in there. But anyway, long story short, I, I took him to Walmart. I had to call Honey and tell her I would be a little late. I, was, I had picked up somebody on the side of the road and took him into Walmart. And, and I'm not trying to blow my own horn. I'm just trying to make a point here real quickly. I told the man because I had Honey's card. I said, listen, whatever's in Walmart that you want, you just help yourself to it. <laughs> amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Amen in Jesus' name. So... I said, uh, he come up there and he had just a little bit, you know, and I said, Sister Jessica, I said, man, you can get more than that. I said, man, go, go help yourself. I said, looks like you need some shoes. Let's go back to the shoe department, get you some shoes. He said, well, I could use some shoes. So we went back there, honey, bought him a pair of shoes. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And so anyway, he come back up. I said, well, we got more money on the card. He said, man, I can only tote just so much. I'm going somewhere now. I thought, I never thought about that. He said, I can only just tote so much. Next time you pass somebody hitchhiking, just for just for just a small moment, think about how much faith they must really have. Because they're depending on some kind person to take a few minutes out of their busy schedule to hand them a dollar or to hand them a hamburger. Come on now, church, a good place to say Amen. But Toby done said, we don't need to judge the situation. We just need to do what God's laid on our heart to do. Let God keep count, church. Amen. Let God keep the count. 
So anyway, I took this man. I said, man, how would you like to spend a night in a room and get you a bath and everything? He said, I'd like that. I said, well, here's what we'll do. Put you up for a couple of nights. And I said, where do you think you might be headed from there? He said, well, I'd like to go over to the Ocala National Forest and get put on that trail. There's a trail, he said, that runs all the way through the state of Florida. He said, I'd like to be put on that. And I said, well, you know, I happen to be off Monday. I said, if you'll be here at a certain time, I'll come back by and pick you up and take you over there. And so, so during those few days that I waited before it was time to go pick him up, Brother Larry, the devil told me, he said, man, that man might be a mass murderer. He might have knives in his bag. He might want to take your little truck somewhere else and leave you on the side of the road. Come on now. But somebody says somewhere that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? So I said, well, here's what we're going to do. I'll just call somebody, and we'll just drive them over there. Amen. What is it said about two or stronger than one or something? Amen. And I said, no, nah, devil, you are a liar. I went up there to pick that guy up in the Brother Danny at the hotel room, and he was gone. I said, Dad, gum it, man, I really wanted. And something told me I was going to go back the other way to go home, and Brother Chava, something told me to go around the other way, and there he was sitting in the ditch waiting on me. I put him in the car and took him on and got a chance to talk to him and tell him about the love of the Lord. And my point is, is this, church been very easy to listen to that voice that would have told me not, not to help that man. Because you understand that, that your hand, that your life is in God's hands either way it shakes out. Amen. If, if, if people can't see, if we can't take time out, people that are called by his name, that believe in Jesus, believe in a God that can do all things. The Bible says there's nothing impossible to those that believe, Brother Wayne. See, we don't know. Our, our job ain't to save people. Our job ain't to clean people up. Our God's to let them see Jesus in our life. I, it, it, it didn't cost honey that much at Walmart. It didn't cost honey that much for that hotel room or that gas that took him to Oak out of the forest because God's gave it back, pressed down, shaking and running over. I'm running out of time. And, and, and to tell you how many times, I can't even think of all the times, brother, how God's paid that back time and time and time again. But here's a great thing if I got this scripture right in my mind in Luke 6 and 38 where it talks about give and he'll give it back to you, pressed down, shaking and running over, pretty close in there. That last little bit of that, that scripture, brother Allen, always gets me. He said, however you've given, however you meet. Come on now, church. He said, that's how you're going to get it back. He said, if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. He didn't leave you there, though, brother. He said, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. Aren't you thankful for a God that is a just God? I'm thankful for a just God. Because, see, we don't work to be saved, but I work because I am saved. Because if God could save me and pull me out of a horrible pit that I had got myself in, Brother Wayne, come on now, church. God can do it for anybody. I'm closing right now real quickly. I'm going to talk to you in John 6, 5 through 9. talks about the little lad and the five loaves and the two fishes. I really want to talk to that guy. Because I'm telling you, what must it be? What kind of testimony, Brother Darrell, could that little fellow must have had? When he left home that day, I don't know if mom and daddy went with him or he went by himself. It don't say, Sister Sherry. It just said that somebody packed him a lunch of five loaves and two little fishes. Amen. Right? See, you don't know when you get up in the morning and put your clothes to go wherever you're going, what God's got in store for you down the road. It'll just be left up to you whether you... Stop long enough to let God work in your life or whether you walk right on through the stop sign. See, here's what it said in John 6, 5 through 9. It says, And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And verse 6 says, And this he said to prove him. 
I wonder if sometimes God puts something in our spirit to prove us. Come on now, church. I just wonder if he don't put somebody in our path sometime, sometime just to see what Brother Brian might really do. For he knew in himself what he would do, and Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. That's the way we think, ain't it? That everyone can just take a little. But he said he'd open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, church. Just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. This is what hangs us up right here. But what are they among so many? See, we get intimidated, Brother Rayleigh, by the size of the crowd. God said there's an opportunity. Now, I can't prove what I'm about to tell you, and I'm not adding to or taking away the Scripture. I'm just asking you to give me a little room here, Sister Mary. The Bible said that they took up 12 baskets of fragments when it was left over. I'm confident the little lad went home with more than five loaves and then two fishes. Amen. Because this is what I know from personal experience, Sister Debbie. Every time I've reached in, God has always gave it back down, pressed down, shaking and running over. God has never disappointed me, Brother Ben. In closing, I want to tell you this quick little story, and I'm done. As a good friend of mine, probably if I was going to put a label on somebody, he'd probably be my bestest buddy in the whole wide world. We own a piece of property together. And uh, I dragged him and begged him, Brother Jerry, to get into the real estate business with me. And you might know the one he did went to the bottom. And he reminds me of that quite frequently about mining his land endeavor. But anyway, he'd hit a little dry spot, Brother Kenny, and he wasn't able to make his payments. So we had to reach out and help him. And so Davis, that just broke his heart. He just hated that so much. Because I don't know if y'all know this or not, but men don't like you reaching out, helping them too much. Amen. We like to do things on our own. My brother Jack, I'm thankful for God that I reached down and helped an old hard-headed man sometime, aren't you? I'm so thankful for that. But he said, that, he said, man, I owe you that money and I got to pay you back. I said, buddy, you don't owe me a dime. I said, you, you well paid me back. We're, we're, he come into some money the other day and wrote Honey a check for what he owed us. He said, we're just paid in full now. So, Jamie, my point of this was telling you this story was this. That's the way I feel about God. See, when I tell God, thank you, Sister Sherry, that just don't seem like enough. You know, when I tell God, I just raise my hands and say, God, I love you. It just don't seem like enough. Thank you just ain't enough when I think about praising my God. Because God is exceedingly, abundantly, above all measure. I can't tell you, church, in my heart and in my full vocabulary that I have, how great God's been to me. Because, see, when I look around and, and, and understand, Brother Wayne, I could have sure been in a whole different place than being here talking to you fine people on this Sunday morning. You know, when I've helped people, if somebody might pass me, I think about, God, that could be me. I think about, Sister Lana, how many times I walked past God when he was knocking on my heart's door. And I just kept on a walking. And if he'd have got an attitude like those folks that said, I'm just going to hang my harp on the willow tree. If he would have just listened to that accuser of the brethren that stands before God accusing me and you day and night. And would have just listened to him and said, you're right, devil, that old Wayne Williams, he ain't worth saving. But see, God knew that he, he, he would have me here this day, this Sunday morning, to talk to you about love thy neighbor. About loving God first and love thy neighbor. About, about it's more than just saying what you're going to do, but it's something about putting feet to your prayers and letting God work in your life, church. Because I'm telling you, church, God's coming back. And, 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 and the thing is, God needs me and you to work through. He don't need me and you, but he needs a vessel to work through to reach out to somebody. And if God can't count on these folks sitting in this house this morning, Brother Brian, who can God count on? Could I get you to stand? 
I don't know about y'all this morning, but I feel like I'd like to just raise my hand. And I'd like to just thank God for how good, for waking me up this morning clothed in the right mind. Because don't doubt for one minute that there couldn't be somebody else sitting in your place this morning that would like to just say, God, I just thank you. God, I just worship you, and God, I just praise you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do, God. God, use me. If you can use anybody, God, use me this morning. Let me be that vessel, God. Let me be that vessel.